Hello Nigerians, you're welcome to another edition of Editors Forum on Galaxy Television. I am Layo Shobo for Lauren Show and let me seize this media to say compliments of the season. Of course, it's the Yuletide season and uh, time to celebrate, time to gather with the family and have great, great fun. It's been a whole year of working back to back, uh, making things happen and this is the time to rest time to have fun time to enjoy time to celebrate yes with family members so i hope you have a very great one with your family members and definitely hope the hampers and you know all the perks of the season <laughs> are coming in already all right it's editors forum once again and i am Layo shobo for lauren show as you know this is where we discuss issues on the front burner during the week and we bring solution, um, we have solution driven conversation around them in order to make our nation and our world at large a better place. Definitely, as the name implies, Editors Forum is a platform for journalists um, and other professionals in the journalism field to give their opinions, to dissect, to analyze issues and stories as they happen in our dear nation, Nigeria. And of course, I won't be in the studio alone today. As always, I have my guests with me who will be doing justice to the topics of the day. But before we, um, I introduce him and um, we go on into the conversation, I'll just do a quick run through some of the things that will be highlighted on the program today. So on Monday, yeah, the crisis that's rocking River State House of Assembly took a new turn as um, 27 members of the House of Assembly defected from the ruling People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. And then during the week also, we saw some other commissioners also resign. Like the, the lawmakers defected from one party to another and then seven commissioners in total they resigned from their position, citing personal, um, personal issues and interest to the government. And on Tuesday, we saw INEC, you know, inaugurating nine out of ten residential electoral commissioners that were recently appointed by President Bola Metinubu and cleared by the National Assembly. And also on Tuesday, news broke, the kind of news that Nigerians have been waiting for all all time long if i can say that governor rotimi akere dulu of ondo state his his spokesperson said the governor would be going on medical leave on wednesday and would be handing over to his deputy so on tuesday that information came out and on wednesday we got also information that that has been done the 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 governor went on leave to take care of his health and then he transferred power as demanded by the constitution to his deputy um that is lucky ayeda atiwa and also on on wednesday a bigger thing also happened in the education sector uh, where president bola metinobu and the federal executive council in general removed public universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education staff from the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, IPPIS. Uh, the Minister of Education announced this, and this is also uh, a very big topic for the day because this has been one of the things um, education, one particular education body has been clamoring for, one of the things and eventually it it is here and so so many other uh, things happened during the week also on friday on friday now the supreme court of nigeria refused to grant the detained leader of the indigenous people of uh, biafra ipop refused to grant him freedom he was billed uh, granted bail by the appeal court and as a matter of fact the charges of terrorism leveled against him was um, dismissed by the court, given the reason that the federal government, you know, um, extracted them from Kenya, and the court of law, the court of appeal, said that was unlawful. However, the Supreme Court, you know, on Friday turned overturned that judgment, saying even if 
what uh, the federal government did or the security agencies did was wrong still does not dissolve all of the charges leveled against him and so he wasn't um, granted bail he will still be in custody and then also on friday as i mentioned earlier was when um six more commissioners from river state cabinet resigned citing personal reasons uh okay so to 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 do justice to these stories and um uh, topics of the day i have my first guest with me uh mr Olushegun Ario. he's the publisher um urban express news thank you so much for being here thank you i mean it, it, it's been about two weeks that we've had <laughs> back over so i don't know if you remember the time i mentioned okay our guests are supposed to join us and then lagos happened <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to have you here eventually. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's let's quickly d look at the issues one after the other before Lovely. we go into the you know major Main stories. So Ake Dulu, yes, as we saw on Tuesday and eventually on Wednesday, yes. handing over power after months of you know back and forth, his deputy having issues with the House of Assembly yes. and everything. What what what, what do you? Um, what do you have to say about that? Mm, it's about uh, leadership challenges that, uh, that has a lot of um, legal lacuna, at, you know, in governance, visually. Mm. Because um, the development naturally should not have uh, uh, anything to do with, um, you know, people from different arms of government drawing themselves you know, from the back, you know, and four things that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, it has been like that. If you uh, remember the issue that happened in Kogi, you know, when the governor, you know, after the election died, and then the issue about who becomes the, uh, the who becomes takes the governor, over. Takes, takes over the, the party's uh, leadership then, that uh, do, uh, uh, Audu, Audu and then uh, Faliki, you know. So eventually, Yaya Bello, who took a second, came in. But uh, having said that, the National Assembly discovered there was a lacuna in the law, you know, and adjustment was made. But on, although it is not the same with um, that it was, but what we saw there, you know, in Ondo State is really, really of human uh, 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 challenges, you know. We heard that uh, the president had invited them. You know, mm. and one thing I, 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 I remember that was prominent in the news was that uh, there was a clause where the deputy governor was asked to write a, a, a resignation letter, you know, without any date imputed there. So some senior journalists was, was debate, were debating it that uh, the president was there and that, you know, illegality of such happened. And one of my... You know, one of the editors for on this day newspaper, you know, wrote that um, he was waiting for the counter reaction from president at that time to say that indeed what was written regarding, you know, putting his uh, say resignation up front is not true, mm. and that uh, he was waiting for rebuttal, but nothing of such. So it showed that, you know, there was. Um, a, a letter of resignation written by the deputy governor. So all those things are not uh, better for our democracy in Nigeria. Now look at the issue of um, the man's uh, and his own his ailment. You know, I I don't expect uh, Governor Kerry to so drag you know that process for so too long. Given mm. that you know is the former uh, MBA president, he knows the law. He knows the a law. A senior advocate of Nigeria should be able to know that. Okay, I want to have you know a medical attention my deputy should you know take charge mm. he would he, he refused the same thing general Muhammad Buhari you know when Yemi Oshibajo was there it was people shouting talking why would you be taking you know responsibility from from where from you UK are. Mm. you know and then asking that you have to be signing document from from UK in your medical hospital uh, uh, room you know, why then is our vice president or deputy governor functional? What is the essence of having the deputy governor if you refuse to ask him to do anything? Okay. So the constitution 
the constitution lacuna there is that prominent role must be given to, to governor the, and, and automatic the uh, 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 mantle of position you know once the, the the principal is not around should be allowed from the constitution so i think that should be debated in national assembly mm. so that that lacuna would naturally remove itself and then allow you know a deputy governor to take mantle once it is identified or there's a media explanation to show that the person the, the governor you know is not physically fit and then he needs to you know attend to medical need abroad or wherever okay uh, so, let's let's quickly go on a commercial break when we return we'll continue the conversation do stay with us thank you all right you're welcome back it's still editors forum on galaxy television and i would have loved us to also do some quick reactions but because our time is far spent so we'll have to go um see this report that will lead us to our first topic okay. of the day uh so let's see this report when we return We'll delve into the conversation proper. Do stay with us. Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, IPPIS, was conceptualized in October 2006 by the federal government as one of its reform programs to improve the effectiveness and efficiency in the storage of personnel records and administration of monthly payroll in such a way to enhance confidence in staff strength and to have a database that will check ghost workers. The introduction of the policy and its subsequent implementation in 2007 with core objectives to pay federal government employees on time and accurately to have a centralized payroll system that meets the needs of federal government employees was part of government's efforts to reduce the level of recurrent expenditures in particular and personnel costs, which represents more than 50% of the recurrent expenditure. This policy was, however, criticized by various agencies, especially the IA institution, which believed the policy was to strangulate their earnings and erode their independence. Since then, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has been making trouble against the government. In fact, they preferred a payment option known as the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, UTAS, as an alternative to IPPIS which the government itself rejected. Throughout the eight years of President Buhari led administration, it was strike upon strike and protest upon protest until Wednesday, December 13, 2023, when the Federal Executive Council made things easy for the I institutions by exempting them from IPPIS. One of the problems which the Vice Chancellors, Directors, and uh, Provost of College of Education, those managing the tertiary sector in Nigeria, have been complaining about uh, having the subscription to IPPS. You know what IPPS does? And um, which has made uh, recruitment and many other activities of the university relating to personnel, very, very difficult. Now today, uh, today's council, at today's council, uh, it has been decided, the president has directed that vice chancellor should no longer, uh, or have been taken out of that service. So this is a very, very important development for the vice chancellor that will allow for efficient uh, management of the universities. We got a, a, a very big uh, relief well, from what uh, universities and other tertiary institutions from the IPPIS, uh, the Integrated Personnel Payroll and Information System. Uh, you recall that uh, the university um, authorities and ASU have been clamoring for the exemption of uh, the universities and other tertiary institutions from this system. Today, Council has graciously uh, approved that. Uh, what that means is that uh, uh, going forward, the universities, like the Honorable Minister of Education has said, and other tertiary institutions, the Polytechnics and Colleges of Education, will be taken off 
the IPPIS system. PIS, in the last 15 years, our site checking ghost workers has also been responsible for payment of salaries and wages directly to government employees' bank account with appropriate deductions and remittance of third party payments. The higher institution communities have not enjoyed the policy, since as it does not allow their lecturers to do other jobs and then salaries in institutions other than their own. And Nigerians think this removal of IPPIS may improve the learning conditions in the higher institutions. Large, to some extent, reduce the SSI strike, but might not eliminate it. So, when, once there is a steady academic session, there is the, certainly the, the lecturers will be able to concentrate to do their job. And if we're able to do their job, that will enhance educational development in Well, I think it's a welcome development to some extent because uh, the... <laughs>Right, so you have it there, the federal government's removal of universities, polytechnics, colleges of education from the IPPIS platform for payment. Now, they haven't said they are moving to UTAS, but this is, this, I think this is a great win, so to say, for ASU and the educational bodies, given that this is one of the things they have been clamoring for over the years. Mm. So do, do you think um, this will bring great relief and great uh, improvement and development to the educational sector? In the first instance, I don't even see anything great there. In, you know, in, 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 in whatever the both platform. of them were doing. Oh. It is just, what I observe for me is just lack of inclusive planning. You know, you want to bring about something that involves organization and individual. Mm. You must call both parties, you and them must come together, look at it pragmatically. Yeah, that was one of the things that what, was saying, yeah, that the federal government didn't you, include them in the planning before You just before come and then launch things over them, and then you ask them they should follow. And then when they give birth to IPPS, some people, some of the lecturers received their salaries, some didn't. Some of, many of them are my friends, some of my, my professors who taught me, complaining to me. Mm. They told me what IP has been doing to them. These people that earn migrant, a migrant amount of salary compared to what the minister and the rest of them earn, and then to pay their children's school fees to give uh, put more food, uh, food on the table becomes a problem. And you ask them not to go to strike. After paying them migrant amount, the migrant amount you are supposed to, you are supposed to use again to give uh, support to their children and home front is becoming a problem because majority of them could not, you know, get their salary through that IPPS payroll concept, mm. you know. So that is why I said earlier that the issue, the idea itself is, 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 is not a good idea because it is not inclusive in nature, you know, and that is my grudge over everything. You, Mr. Buhari, Abhi General Buhari, he came, he loaded over President, them. President, President you know, Muhammad Buhari. He's general, as far as I'm concerned. He's a general, General Muhammad Buhari, okay? You know, and he behaves in the way the typical general behaves. So you can see, we have, we know them, we know... Okay, look at, looking at what, what this will do to um, the education system now, yes. and even the um, lecturers, as you said, maybe they'll be getting their pay now, uh, more effectively. We so. welcome. I welcome. But, I welcome the uh, the decision of uh, President uh, Bola Ametinumbu for you know reevaluating the whole process and come to this conclusion and then allowing them. If you uh, from the projection you gave here, you know that you know that gave a, a foundation for our discussion. Mm. One of the uh, uh, in, in interviewer was saying that. Um, there are incessant strikes strike. in and out and out and in because of IPPS, independent of the university that is autonomy, granting autonomy or funding of the university. So the president, I want to urge that moving a step further to see how university can get more funding, you know, to up to UNESCO standard. Okay, that so says 
about 40 percent of the national budget should be put into education. Looking at, okay, um, the Federal Executive Council now yes. agreeing to one of the demands of ASU, yes. because uh, removing them from IPPIS is one of their yes. demands. Yes. So would you would you lord this government, and would you would you think, okay, they have more in stock for, you know, the, especially the educational sector? I have told you earlier that as far as I'm concerned, I don't see anything in IPPIS. That has but it is one of the issues that, because you know, uh, Asu the was past, raising. Both, the past president did not do what I called inclusive planning. When you want to bring about an idea that has to do with two parties, you are originating an idea and you, are, you want to, you know, put it in system, you know, for a particular organization that is under you. They are human beings. They are, in fact, they are experts. You would call them and do inclusive thinking inclusive reasoning, inclusive understanding, then inclusive resolution, inclusive planning, and then inclusive implementation. So all those things are not there. You just come and then you said IPPS is the role, you want to cope corruption, you want to do this, and eventually the corruption, the, we have one of the best of them, in, even in his government in the past. So as far as I'm concerned, IPPS is nothing to talk about. It's just what the president, president saw that you know, you should be able to remove, you know, commonsensically. Uh, you are talking to academicians, you are professors, great researchers. Uh, they know the what it should be, what should be done. Uh, must you, 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 it, you they, they must, that is not a discussion as far as I'm concerned. What is the main discussion up in educational sector that we have in Nigeria today is funding, engineering, Departments do not have what it takes in terms of um, uh, apparatus that will make him to understand the, 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 the technicalities, you know, of uh, uh, research in engineering uh, profession. You know, environment, uh, 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 sciences, medical sciences, MBBS. Many of them, they, don't, they would go, they would train them half, half beta. People, many of them would go and read them, write the exam, uh, uh, one of the uh, exam, they call it a uh, plab. You know, before you know, they get the exam, you know, they pass it and then they move to UK and then become a medical expert there. Academically, they are very good. Practically, they have issues. And that is why you see the professors, ASU, the former uh, ASU pres uh, chairman, uh, president, uh, uh, Professor Osodeke, he said, re give. Still the current, though. The former one. I followed okay. him, you know, tooth to nail to hear what exactly they are arguing for, you know. for fund the university there are many obsolete technical uh, uh, apparatus te technological tools and equipment that must have to do with um, developing the practical part of all those students in sciences environment and otherwise so if we the president is now coming to talk about that one eh, we know that the man the, the president the present president is now willing to do what i call good attention to areas of concern in educational development in Nigeria, but not IPPS. IPPS, as far as I'm concerned, is just something that somebody is trying to load on, on, on some experts and then they saw it as something that is not sustainable and something that is even killing them. Their migrant salary is not coming. So let us not even dwell on that. The president, I want to say, should go further to talk about funding the universities. If it is to be that you are going to be giving autonomy to the student uh, to the university and then manage the aspect of school fees you know nigerians day to day we have our own i agree with the politician that once they allow the university to go autonomous you know some of the vc will just kill they will not put into consideration the low income earner the high and the middle income earner in arriving at what is going to be the school fees they will not so if we are going to be giving autonomy to them, they should hold that aspect of the school fees regulation and the rest of it. So government can intervene in that side of school fees and be very human about it. Okay, to yes. talking about that, That's now, what now, now that um, you, the, the federal government has removed you know, that, mm. and hopefully universities are going to now be flexible in their own payment and everything. Yes, yes. Will this not now be an issue, given what you just mentioned, that, you know, some VCs talking about um, um, school fees, and then the lecturers in se themselves having issues on their next platform they would want to use? Because 
So Utah's and IPPIS were uh, 2022 were both tested by NITDA, mm -hmm. and Utah's failed integrity test three times. Okay. According according to the um, director of NITDA at the time. Yes. So will this not now be an issue? So you've been clamoring for this thing, and now the federal government is giving it to you. But looking at okay, Nigerian system itself. Corruption is everywhere. Yes. Will this not now bring an issue back to us and then draw the education se let sector me, let me, back? Let me answer your question. Very simple. You see, it, is, it was because of the fire brigade approach of the executive council at that time mm. to conclude and bring in IPPS on, on, the, on, the, on, on those academic experts that gave birth in the same way. Utah's came in the same way. You know, if you are planning to bring an idea of this magnitude, there is a need for you to be tested for like 10 months. Okay, John Hopkins University discovered them. Um, uh, 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 um, they have discovered them um, uh, 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 a solution to aid HIV now, but it is still in process testing. John Hopkins. So they have just given an explanation to the media that yes we have tested this at least a 40 50 percent is okay but we are still testing you can see the way they are planning and executing their planning and communicating to the public in a professional way to tell the Nigerian uh, the United States of American citizens that yes we have had this solution but we are halfway done but we are still moving so things like this if you are giving birth or you want to give birth to things like this it should come in phases. One, the pre-planning stage to test it, to see the sustainability of this uh, idea, and to see the durability, and to see how it would have it would affect them positively, and to see the negative part. So all these things would have been put into consideration with time. Then see what is going to be the outcome, whether it's going to be of quality or whether it's going to be of less quality. So that will give us a good understanding whether to accept it or not. So not that you just come with an idea and then you fuse it on the people, on, on experts, not people, on experts particularly, IBPS on the academic experts, and you ask them to accept it. So, so and they accepted you, it, saying, but eventually oh, yeah. look at where, what end, ended, ended it. So what you're saying now is um, now that they have been removed, yes. the university, they have to test run their own platform. Platform. And, and if it fails... If, no, test, it, test run it, Look at it pragmatically, and then you will, within one year allow it to flow, not adopting it first. We look at it, test it, make sure it is working, and if it's not working, then leave it, then follow the normal so initial solution that you know we are having before that has been age free. Then along the line, you are planning, you are preparing, and one, one of the days you will conclude and get a better result that would come easily where every members of the academic board will be, ad will be adopted in the payroll system and then there will be a seamless process and then seamless payment as at when due. So that one will be appreciated. Nigerian government should, Nigerian politicians should learn how to plan, propose, implement for the sake of quality, durability and sustainability. That's what we want. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next report that will lead us to the next topic. And uh, then when we return, we'll have the conversation on that.